in Surah Maryam 1958, Ulaika alladheena anama Allahu alayhim minan nabiyyin min dhuriyati Adam wa min man hamalna ma'anuh wa min dhuriyati Ibrahim wa Israel wa min man hadayna wa ishtabayna idha tutla alayhim ayatul rahman kharru sujjadam wa bukiya. They are those among the prophets on whom Allah has blessed from the offsprings of Adam and from those whom we carried with Nuh and from the offspring of Ibrahim and Israel and from those whom we guided and we selected when the ayahs, signs of the gracious were recited on them they fall down prostrating weeping now it, again these are the prophets that I refer to the, in the previous also ayat I refer to Ibrahim Dawud Islam is the prophet and he's a Khalifa and a messenger prophet is a Khalifa. So Allah said, Allah has blessed the prophets. So that means all the prophets were Khalifa. So Allah says, they are those among the prophets whom Allah blessed. All the messengers and the prophets are blessed by Allah. They were blessed. And the blessing was from the children of Adam. So the children of Adam whom Allah blessed, again, they were also Khalifa. From the children of Adam. The blessing was on them. And from those whom we carried with the Nu, those people who were carried with the Nu was blessed. They were Khalifa. And from the offspring of Ibrahim, peace be upon him, and Israel. And from the offspring of Ibrahim, Ismail Islam, Ishaq Islam, Yaqul Islam, Yusuf Islam, all this generation are the Khalifa. They were blessed. They were blessed people. And whom? And, and, and from Israel, the Zuriyat of Israel, the children of Israel. They were blessed. They were the Khalifas. Now he says, and their behavior is also mentioned. Whenever the ayahs or the verses were recited unto them of Allah, they fall down on their foreheads. Huh? Laughing. Oh, weeping. Prostrating and weeping. It, the Arabic says They fall down On the prostration Prostrating Weeping This is the behavior who, To who those Khalifas are Or who are the, the Whom Allah blessed In the prayers Why we What happens in the prayer You yourself Or the Imam recite the ayahs of Allah and those ayahs if you understand the essence and the message of Allah when the message of Allah's and ayahs essence is understood it is coming from Allah he may be reciting as an imam but you know for sure this message is not his this is message is from Allah when you hear those words when you hear the essence of those words you cannot hold yourself. You, you weep and prostrate. You put your forehead, the top thing of your highest, uh, this thing uh, to your prostrate, the highest thing in, in a human being, this portion on forehead. And you cry because you understood the message. You know, there are types of crying. Allah says that we made people laugh and we cry. Who are those people who cry? I tell you, when, this is important to, to educate you. The people who do wrong or when they are hurt, when their feelings are hurt, they are wrapped up in grief and they cry. So their faces become black. You understand? Their faces become black because they are crying on their hurts. Because they, 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 could not under, they could not get what they wanted. So remember, when you cry on your hurts and when you cry on your wrongdoings, that is not the right thing to cry on. When you amend and you correct, you understand? When you amend and you correct in the nearness of Allah and when you receive the message of Allah, you cry of goodness. Not of your badness. I can give you example like one when a person is 
like for example any person wants to achieve something in life and when he achieves in life and people honor him he start crying why is crying is he hurt that is what i'm educating on the ayas essence when you cry you understand that god has blessed me with the ayas you are not crying because you are darkened or you are wrapped up in grief you are crying because allah the creator of this universe has blessed you with the essence of the message you fall down this is of high highest achievement in mankind's in, in mankind's life you can never get that is allah said that wa ma adraka ma laylatul qadar in the month of ramadan what do you know what what laylatul qadar is what the night of power or revelation is it is better than how many 1000 1000 months because that is the reason we you cry on the eyes of the essence of message, message of allah then if you know then you practice otherwise you will not practice this happens in the month of ramadan any night if you get the understanding at the essence of the message of allah zayat you cry on those ayas because you are being blessed and now you want to improve and because of the elevation you got from the allah zayat then you cry it is like getting achievement from allah the creator of the universe who will benefit you here and in the garden but people who cry on the wrongs on the bad doings they like hustles in their seat and they go all every day listen to the music and they listen to this uh, wrong and they put you more into mire that is the wrapped up in grief that shaitan does it that crying makes you black when you hear the essence and the message of allah's ayat that ayat will make you white your heart will be purified so remember these are the people you must understand how to develop that how to amend how to correct when you got the message and the essence of the message of ayat you improve because of allah has given you the education and you got the message of allah then you improve and then you fall down because this is coming from allah alone this is ayat is allah zayas so this behavior is for those people those prophets and the who were selected by allah and these khalifas they were selected by allah and among the and the ship the the believers in the ship and the offsprings of adam who carried with or those from who carried with the nu or the offsprings of ibrahim and israel and those whom we guided and selected when the ayat signs of the gracious were recited on them they fall down prostrating weeping but further in surah al-araf 7 and 170 ayat wal ladina yumassikuna bil kitab wa qamu as-salah inna la nudhi'u ajra al-muslihin and those who hold fast with the book and establish salah prayer surely we will not waste the wage reward of the corrected ones so the other people are who are the, the righteous khalifa the, who are holding fast to the book and they are establishing the salah the prayer as it should be practiced and allah says he will not waste the wage or reward of the corrected ones those who are correcting if we want to correct ourselves if we want to amend ourselves then we have to hold fast to the book and establish the salah the prayer as it should be established i explain if you will establish the salah prayer as it should be established then they are the corrected ones in the nearness of allah they are that are the khalifa if you are not doing so you are that those khalifa allah is mentioned they are deviating and who is who is the main culprit enemy is the devil the shaitan your enemy because you for you you got the knowledge you got the book you know the names and he was asked to bow down the angels so you must understand your enemy who is your enemy and he is always coming in your thought form always coming in your thought form again another ayat surah araf 7 and 169 fa khalafa min ba'dim khalfum warithul kitab ya khuduna arada hadha al-adna wa yaquluna sayughfar lana wa yatim aradum mithluhu ya khuduh alam yukhad alayhim mithaqul kitab الا يقول والله الا الحق ودرسوا ما فيه والدار الاخره خير للذين يتقون افلا تعقلون from after them then succeeded khalifa successors they inherited the book they take the width of this nearer smaller less significant 
and they say soon will be forgiven and if there comes to them wideness like it they take it is not the covenant of the book was taken on them they will not say over allah accept the truth and they will give lesson what is in it and the circle of the hereafter is better for those who guard then will you not use intelligence so now you can understand the khalifa the khalifa after them they were khalifa who were given this book who has got this book khalifas ha eh? so they say allah says that the the people who were given this book they were the inheritor of the book warisul kitab inherit because my father was a muslim and the grandfather was a muslim so i inherited the book the book is inherited to me allah says they are they are involved in the wit of the world meaning they want to be they are involved in the worldly life small things in the as compared to the hereafter what is anything you are getting from the world benefit of the world in comparison the good pleasures of allah is it is it significant is it significant anything which you desire in the world if allah provides you that do you think is it comparable to what allah say what you will be given in the garden or when allah is pleased with you can you compare it so allah says that they 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 inherited the book they take the wit of this near nearer world smaller less significance and they soon will be forgiven they say they soon will be forgiven because we have got the book we are muslims will be forgiven actually they are involved in the worldly life in the less significant things and thinking they are born in a muslim family we inherited the book we will be forgiven no this is what the general concept is it is the it is, it is the jews should be punished it is the christians should be punished and the hindus should be punished and the buddhists should be punished we the atheists should be punished or the kafir the rejecter should be punished or the hypocrite should be punished what about us we are saying we have got the book in that the book will be forgiven it is we who believing that we will be forgiven and our interest in the worldly life all the time the garb of a muslim world the the whole the what do you say the halula or the the garb we make ourselves as muslims label muslims and we pakistan is a muslim country we living in a muslim country we are muslims all what's your name by this do you pray uh, no do you read the quran understand no what so nothing we are doing and we are expecting that because we are muslim will be forgiven and we are interested in the worldly life in comparison to the good pleasures of allah in comparison to the jannah or the tatmin al qulub or the satisfaction of the heart how can it be if you are not the nearness of allah you are not getting the message of allah's ayat so that is what allah says and allah says what what their job was they are saying we will be forgiven if there comes to them them wicked like it they take it whatever is the worldly life they are always after the worldly life they take it allah says is not the covenant of the book was taken on them they will not say over allah accept the truth and they will give lessons what is in it this was the covenant of allah who inherited the book who inherited the book the covenant of allah for, to this khalifa was to give lessons from the book to give lessons to people about from the book and they will not say on allah accept the truth they will not say on allah accept the truth and they will teach the book how many people are teaching the book how many are people teaching the book how many in the world it is not the duty of only the the scholars believe me it is the duty of every individual who wants to be a believer who wants to be a muslim submitter in the nearness of god they will not say anything about allah except the truth number one that's the covenant who inherited the book 
That's the covenant who, who, who inherited the book. That means my family member, my ancestor were Muslims. So I got this book from inheritance. So the, 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 the covenant was by Allah that you will give lessons from the book, number one. And you will not say about Allah except but the truth. People are lying about the book of Allah. People are lying about Allah's message. Believe me, easily. They are lying about Allah's message. And they, they lie upon Allah's message. They don't speak the truth. And they don't even give lessons from the book. They were supposed to give lessons from the book. And we are talking about these Khalifas. Remember this. They follow their desires. And their desire is the wit of, the, of this world. They are involved in small petty matters of the worldly life. They are involved in that. They are involved in that. And whenever they get something benefit out of this worldly life, they take it. So they are involved in that. They are the Khalifas. I am telling you, they were represented. I told you all the time, the Khalifa were the right people, but they mis how the Shaitan misguided them. That they say, we have got the book, we will be forgiven. We have the, got the book, we will be forgiven. At least we have got the book, we read in the Arabic. Allah knows, Allah will give us sawab. So you must understand, be very careful what is going on within you. It has nothing to do with others. It is the one who has got the book, the Khalifa, are those people also. They were always the, they are on the right track. They were given the book, inherited the book. The prophets were there. They were the Khalifas. And how they behave is described in the eyes. And how the people after them, there were some Khalifa. Or the, I still today also, we can identify ourselves. Are we, the, are we following the, 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 the Khilafat? You are asking about Khilafat, Khilafat. Are you doing so? Are you involved in the message of Allah's ayahs? Do you feel or you are interested in the, in the worldly affairs? Or you are giving lessons from the book? Or you are taking guidance from the way you are speaking the truth about Allah? I am referring to you means everybody including myself. I am not just pointing people fingers. I am talking about everybody. The Khalifa, the Khalifa is given to all of us, the believers of all times. You take lessons from the book, you educate people from the book. Do not speak about Allah except the truth. If you are doing so, then you are the, you, uh, you get the honor of Allah that He will make you Khalifa. If you are not doing anything like this, then you can see they, they are involved in small petty matters. And the circle Allah in, and educate you further. And the circle of the hereafter is better for those who take God. Then will you not use your intelligence? Will you not use your intelligence? What is better for you in the world? Either getting involved in small, little, little insignificant things in comparison to the good pleasures of Allah in the Jannah and the garden. That is what we have to do. Maryam 19, 59 and 60 وَاتَّبَعُوا shahwat فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيَّا from after them, then succeeded Khalifa's successor who wasted the salah, the prayer, and followed the desire. So soon they shall encounter wrong. Among the good fellows, the Khalifa that Allah mentioned, now the Khalifas are being deviated. Allah gave you again and then the Khilafat. So what Allah said, for after them, then succeeded Khalifa, successor, who wasted the Salah prayer. How they wasted the Salah prayer? No shivering, no crying, no weeping. Nothing whatsoever. Nothing is happening to them. They are praying. He says, Adaw Salah. And they follow their desires. Soon they shall encounter wrong. How do you follow? You say, Allah Akbar. And Imam is reciting, I don't understand. I am thinking about what happened about this and about that. I am thinking of so many things in the prayer. So what I am thinking, I am following that desire. I am not listening to the message. I am not listening to the essence of the message that my, my skin should shiver and I should fall down in prostration while crying. No, my mind is wandering. And I am thinking of so many things in my life. And that I am thinking about my desire, what, what, what just how I wanted in my life. Because the mind is designed in such a manner the moment you cut off from everything, from, from your work or from your need, whatever 
Even in your, if you're doing some work, your mind wanders. But once you cut off, like we say, Allahu Akbar, and when you say you're cut off, meaning you're not doing anything now, you are? That's no, no, praying. I know you're praying. You are cut off, in a way. So your mind becomes, you're not doing anything except you're standing behind an imam. So now your mind is cut off. The moment you are idle, all the shaitan say, ha ha, how are you? And he enters your mind. Because now the imam is doing his work. I'm just behind the imam, he's, he's, he's reciting. I'm not concentrating on what he's reciting. So the shaitan enters and gives you flowery talks and whatever your desires. And all the time, I'm thinking of what, what the shaitan is taking me to. So remember, this is how your des you are following your desire in during prayer. Because your mind is cut off, now you are all these, no, all your feelings are, are coming at that moment. And people say, my mind is disturbed when I pray. Because, because you don't know what, the, what you are reading, why are you reading? So remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is going on. This is how the Khalifas adaw salah. They wasted the salah prayer. The Khalifas, when they recited the ayahs, they fall down prostrating, weeping. You have to develop this. And how can you develop this to understand the message? And once you understand the message, then recite those ayats in prayer, which are related to your life. Not the one you, when you, when you were a child, when you were taught two, three, four surahs, and you're reciting again that, those ayats, surahs. You have to understand the ayat, then you understand the essence of the ayat. And once you stand before Allah, you must know, concentrate what is being told to you. Then the effect will come. And once the effect will come, then definitely you'll go prostrate, crying and weeping and elevation you'll feel and you can't help crying. So this is what they say, they succeed the Khalifa success. Now what I'm telling you, they were misguided. They were, they followed their desires. From after them, the Khalifa succeeded, Khalifa successor who wasted their Salah prayer and followed the desire. So soon they shall encounter wrong. Now Allah giving you how to amend the con continuation. Illa man taba wa amana wa amila saliha faulaika yadhuluna janna wala yudlamuna shaya except one who repented and believed and did correction they are those who will enter the garden and they will not be oppressed in anything now if you are in that position what we have to do is because if you are wasting your salah prayer but just now I demonstrated now, if you want to, Allah say, except for those who repent and believe and did correction, they are those who will enter the garden and they will not be oppressed in anything. So, ladies and gentlemen, we, have, we, we, we are reading this ayat. It is educating us, if you are in that state, that we are just bowing and prostrating, bowing and prostrating five times a day, Alhamdulillah, mashallah, I am praying five times a day. And if you are not getting the benefit, so you must know what you have to do. You must know what you have to do. You have to correct, repent and believe and did correction. How will you correct? You will memorize those verses, those ayahs, which are related to your life. Which you must understand the Arabic with translation and the spirit. So that it becomes a part of your belief. Reprogramming your psyche. Reprogramming your psyche you becomes a part of your belief. As if it's you then. You, somebody says uh, immediately the ayat comes. Or even the shaitan whispers immediately the ayat defend you. The ayat is basically defending, defending your character, the moral personality. If you do not have any ayat, you can't develop a moral person, personality. So remember, if you want to amend, repent and believe and did correction, that now, if you want to amend and correct, you must memorize those verses which are understood by you or related to your life. Memorize those with meaning and understand. Not only the meaning. Because your life is, is involved somewhere. So you must control that life because of, by the ayat. You cannot control your life without an ayat. So if you know that ayat which is directly related to your life and you are involved in something you want to amend, that ayat you remember, and then you uh, uh, memorize it with meaning and understanding and the spirit. And once you bow down or prostrate on that ayat, 
will become a part of your belief and you will cry also. Otherwise, it will not affect you. Qul Allah or say that Allah is one. Allah samad lam yalid wa lam yulad. You know Allah samad, Allah is the absolute eternal. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He is not begotten. Neither he, uh, he begets. Now, if you, if you keep on reciting this, are you believing that Allah is begetting a child? Do you believe that? Will you affect you? You know, you or you don't believe this. You only believe the ayat. You do not believe that Allah has begotten a son. Do you? So if you are reciting this again and again, will it benefit? You already believe. But the ayat which you cannot believe, it has been unveiled to you. It has been revealed to you. You understand the essence. Now you remember that ayat. That will control your psyche and amend. You do not say that Allah is begotten a son, neither is begotten. And you are saying, Qul, you are remember, all the time, oh, I remember, and there is none like him. He doesn't beget, he is not begotten. I am remi- reminding myself, how, you are reminding yourself all the time this? Even if you know the meaning, you don't believe that. Do you believe that God has begotten a son or Allah is, Allah is begotten? No. But you keep on reminding this. No, in prayer you try to memorize that ayah which is appealed to you, which is directly related to your life, which you are doing wrong somewhere, and the ayat is correcting you. That you remember. That is how you correct. Because on that, you, when you prostrate and you bow down and say, Subhana Rabbil Azim, Subhana Rabbil Ala, then it affects your mind. And when you say, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah, your mind will be focused and you will cry also. And at the same time, when somebody talks to you about anything, you, about your life, about what you believe, you quote that ayat. Then it's become a part of yourself. Otherwise, it will not will never become a part of yourself. And you will never have feelings for the ayahs. This is how you have to make a part of your life, these ayahs. These ayahs not, is not for just recitation. It has to be part of your life. This is how we correct. Surah Al-Anam 6, 133 ayah. ba'dikum. مَا يَشَاءُ كَمَا أَنْشَأَكُمْ مِنْ ذُرِّيَةِ قَوْمٍ آخرين. And your Lord has enriched the one who is merciful. If he wills, he will take you away. And he will make Khalifa's successors from after you. Whatsoever he wills. Like what he originated you from the offspring of other people. Now he is giving this warning to people in all times. That your Lord has enriched the one who is merciful. If he wills, he will take you away and he will make inheritor successors from after you. Whatsoever he wills, like what he originated you from the offspring from others. So if he will not perform the correct duties as a Khilafat or the khala- success has given to the believers of the Muslims of, the, of all times, if he will, we will not fulfill, so he will take away the Khilafat from us. He will take away. He will take away and he will make Khalifa's success from after you. He was like what he originated from the offspring of other people. Like we have been originated from the offspring of other people. And if he will not do the job, so he will be replaced by other people. So you remember, this is always given the Khilafat to, or the, to the Muslim world, the believers in the nearness of Allah. And he takes them away. He always takes away. And then gives to those people, always to the right people. And then when he deviated, when they deviated, then he gives again to the, those people. So it's a continuous ongoing process. So he will take away and he will make Khalifa success from after you, whatsoever he wills, like what he originated you from the offspring of others. We have been originated from the offspring of others. So he will take away the Khalifa and give it to some other people, the Khalifa, the successors. It is a continuous process. So you, we have to identify ourselves.